Hey guys, Bick Mitchum here, coming at you with another podcast. Today we've got Hello Greedo. Hello Greedo, how's it going? Doing great, how are you man? Great, I'm great. Thanks a lot for stopping in. Really appreciate you taking a, a nice hour out of your day to stop in and visit us. Really appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. All right, so we're going to get rolling here, and the first thing I wanted to touch on, and you may not 100% be aware of it, but uh, in the uh, Battlefront community right now, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of complaints about some newer YouTubers that are using a lot of clickbait. For example, uh, a title or thumbnail may read um, Anakin gameplay in Star Wars Battlefront 2 when it's just in fact a, a skin of Luke. And uh, uh, so, so like, what kind of words of encouragement do you have? for Because the, these creators are really upset that their, their views are being stolen. Do you have any kind of words of encouragement for the, the good creators out there? Yeah, I mean... I, I I know it'd be hypocritical hypocritical for me to say ignore it because I do a lot of like making fun of clickbait, making fun of clickbaity uh, YouTube channels. But you know that kind of nonsense is only temporary. It's like uh, like the other like the good U- YouTubers, the good Battlefront creators. They're going to be around for a long time. Those clickbait channels. They're going to fizzle out. They're going to die out. The subscribers, uh, they're going to realize that they're kind of being um, fooled, you know? And um, I don't know. If you if you just stay focused and, and not give in to that clickbaity nonsense and just kind of ignore it, um, it'll fade away. I truly believe that. It'll fade away, you know? But um, I haven't really been paying attention to the community that much lately. Uh, so I, sometimes I find that I live in a little bubble and people ask me, have you heard of this Star Wars YouTuber? Have you seen this video? Do you know about this, uh, new Battlefront gameplay or whatever? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I live, sometimes I, I find I live in like a little cave in my office and I, I don't read or explore as much as I should. Nice. Well, that's good. Cause there's a lot of, uh, a lot of turmoil and, uh, a lot of people are really, really pissed off. Interesting. Um, I'll have to look into it because I might actually make a video on it today. Why not? Why not? Nice. Um, so on the topic of clickbait, do you feel that Star Wars HQ falls into this category? Um, to tell you the truth, I've never really watched. Uh, I maybe have watched two Star Wars HQ videos. Like I said earlier, I live in a bubble and I'm a bad YouTuber watching YouTube. Um, I do kind of and i actually met those guys out in san francisco and they're super nice super humble um it's it's just a different style than what i would ever want to do like when some little tiny nugget of news comes out i have zero desire to make a full full long video about it and then show old battlefront gameplay you know what i mean like that's just not I, i just don't have a desire to do that i would rather just write scripts that i find interesting and not report on the most basic minutia that's out there in the community um but hey it's done well for them i do i mean i'm sure some people consider it clickbaity but obviously it's working for them i don't know if they put out false information or anything like that um maybe they do and if that's the case yeah that's kind of a bummer but uh no it's just not my style i wouldn't want to make videos like that um uh it just seems really basic and simple, like talk over old gameplay. I don't, I don't know. I don't get a kick out of it to tell you the truth, but, but yeah. Uh, what do you think? I mean, would you consider, uh, you might be more familiar with them than I am, but. Well, I think the biggest complaint is just the, what you said about the small, the small nugget of news and then kind of making it into, uh, um, you know, recently I saw a video that's, you know, from someone with a, like less than a thousand subscribers and it had, you know, close to a hundred thousand views because mm-hmm. a developer coughed when someone mentioned something like he typed cough, cough on, the, right. on social media. And then it's like, Oh, confirmed, right? <laughs> you know, like it's, so it's, it's kind of, that's the kind of stuff that I think they're talking about. And I think Star Wars HQ kind of falls in between real news and just kind of, I, I don't think they say anything false. I think mm-hmm. they confirm things too without with little information. I think that's kind of what people are complaining about. Okay, okay. See, I, I find those kind of instead of making a video, I would rather talk about it on a live stream. You know, I, I wouldn't want to make a video about it. A cough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's An a good internet point. Internet cough. <laughs> so moving on to the game itself, um, we're going to talk about that briefly. If you were to give me three words, three adjectives only to describe Star Wars Battlefront Two, what would they be? <clears throat> um man that's really tough 
<clears throat> Golly. I don't know. Um, three words. Divisive? <laughs> um, simple? And fun, maybe? Those mm -hmm. three words? I don't, yeah, I mean, the, I guess that's all over the spectrum, but it's a very divisive game. Um, uh, it's a very simple game, and it's a very fun game, in my opinion. Uh, nice. Yeah, so you're not you're good. not uh, you're not overly disappointed. You're as a as a a fan of the game. You're not disappointed with the execution at launch, or you're more no no That's no because uh, there is a lot of disappointment surrounding the launch for sure. Right, uh, of course. I mean, that's yeah, it's going to go with the territory. I mean, everybody has their own idea what they want a game to be or a movie to be. Uh, and you know, as I say, you kind of got to ride the roller coaster. You, you're not in control of things. You know, you got to just, I don't know, they're doing their be the best they can. It's not like the developers want to give a shitty product, you know? Uh, I don't know. It's no, I've been, I've been pretty pleased. It's pretty much what I want other than like a few game mode, like cargo. I'd love a cargo mode. I'd love a cloud city mode, but you know, I'm hopeful with hopeful that with the free DLC, we'll get the, some of that kind of stuff. Um, but no, I, I'm overall pleased. I am. I am. That, maybe that's because I'm a Disney original trilogy EA shill. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to move from the game now. We're going to talk a little bit about the movies. Um, so we're going to do something a little interesting. It's going to kind of feel a little bit like a game show. So, um, okay. so we're going to talk about The Last Jedi here, guys. So spoilers, <laughs> alert, alert. If you haven't watched the movie, it's going to get spoiled here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a reference to the plot and you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Like, uh, okay, okay. So you're going to, okay. I, I think I get it. All right. So Rose and Finn romance. Um, forced goofy. <laughs> I like, I mean, I get it, right? I get it. People can fall in love over traumatic experiences. I get it. Um, it felt kind of goofy at the end there uh, when she saved him. It, I really did roll my eyes in the back of my head. Like I thought it was going to be a beautiful moment of self-sacrifice. Finn, this um, <clears throat> this stormtrooper now turned resistance fighter, is going to save his friends by destroying this Death Star tech cannon thing. But then at the last second, he gets saved, and uh, <laughs> and then which which inadvertently puts a hole into the big blast door thing it could potentially get everybody killed you know i don't know it just felt goofy to me all right so what about luke's death uh loved it i loved, loved it. it yeah it it was i thought it was beautiful it's as steel saunders put it um it's not the luke skywalker that he wanted it's the luke skywalker that he needed uh, I don't know if I would necessarily agree with that because I, I went in with like no expectations. I didn't really want a version of Luke Skywalker. But no, I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was beautiful. And that twist at the end when he's not actually on crate, I think that will go down as one of the most epic moments in the saga for people watching it in the future. Uh, that little twist. Yeah, and I think the, it was beautiful that he was never, he never left the island and he died staring at twin sons and uh, it's kind of became one with the force. I thought it was I thought it was great. Nice. This was a little vague. Um, Snoke. Uh, he Im Snoke Emperor. I mean, he followed the same kind of uh, Emperor role in the original trilogy. Um, he served a purpose to kind of uh, evolve the characters around him. Um, I, I think a lot of people put too much emphasis on on Snoke. And I, I think it's almost a product of Star Wars and its Star Wars fandom in itself. Like people read so deep into things. There's canon for every little piece of minutia in the franchise. People expect so much detail. And then you have a character that, you know, he's just there to make Kylo Ren struggle and become supreme leader, and people just can't accept it as a film they need some giant backstory because they're used to that you know no. i like well, snoke in the movie well said um what about princess leia as um, her mary poppins moment 
Um, that was might have been my least favorite moment in the movie. Um, I, I thought it looked it weird. Was, I just felt weird watching it. <laughs> it did. It did make you feel weird. Yeah, and it was one of those things like, like they're zooming in and in your head while you're watching the movie for the first time, you're like, there's no way they're going to do this, right? There's no way they're going to do this. Oh my God. If they do this, I'm going to cringe. Oh no, they just did it. And it was just like, this, what the hell kind of moment. Um, my dad actually interpreted it uh, in a weird, in a weird way in a kind of an interesting way. He, the way he saw it and what, and you know, he's not a big star Wars fan. He, you know, he doesn't dive deep into it. Like we all do. Um, he interpreted it as Kylo Ren saving his mom, like moving her into the ship. It was just kind of interesting. I'm, I'm sure that's not what was intended at all, okay. but it was just kind of interesting that he saw it that way. But, that is interesting. I never thought of it that way. I just, I thought the idea of her using the force was a really good idea. I just thought mm-hmm. the special effects, just the way it looked, it just looked so like you were <laughs> use the word goofy. Like it looked goofy. Yeah, it, it did look really goofy. Um, what about Ray's parents? Love it. Love it. <laughs> yep. Absolutely love it. Like, I've been saying it, like, probably before The Force Awakens came out, when I talked about these characters and what I thought they would end up being and whatnot. I've always said that I hoped Ray's parents would be nobodies because there's this thing in Star Wars where everybody has to be connected. Everybody needs to be connected with someone else or a family member, yada, yada, yada. And I've never understood the idea of the Force having to be passed down generation to generation. I've always kind of seen the Force like this, um, I don't know, this vibration in the universe that you can tap into and bend to your wills and wishes if you're willing, you know? And anybody can do it. Not just somebody that was born from Force-sensitive parents. So, I don't know, the fact that she, the, her parents are nobodies, they sold her for drinking money, uh, it kind of... It kind of tells everybody that, you know, anybody can be special. You don't have to be a, a Skywalker to be special. And, and even when Kylo Ren said, you don't have a, a place in the store, you're nobody, you're nothing. I love that. Like, she's like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm nobody. But why does that, why does it matter? Why, I don't, I don't understand it. I, I don't know. I liked it. Long story short. <laughs> I feel like that's a really good message. And I agree for yeah. sure. I just felt like. Disney especially would have made more of an attempt to like kind of bring that to the forefront than to just kind of push it aside like ah they're just drunks whatever like they didn't really like kind of I didn't feel like I kind of felt the same way as you and actually we did a podcast leading up to the movie about predictions and that was something we talked about and I agree that's a good idea I just felt like it just wasn't it didn't feel like that's the message they were trying to send Mm, okay yeah um what about uh the throne room scene the battle against the Praetorian Guards I think it's one of the best action scenes in the saga. Um, really well done. Um, there was a lot of tension in there. Visually, it was beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I have like zero negative thoughts on that on that scene. And I haven't re- I haven't really heard anybody kind of putting down that scene. I think even for people that disliked the movie, I think it was. Uh, I think most people enjoyed it. Um, I, I love, like, there's weight to that fight, you know? Kylo Ren, it, it seems like Kylo Ren's lightsaber weighs 10 pounds or 20 pounds, and he has to swing it. There's, I don't know, the fight felt very realistic and grounded. Um, that was really well done, really well done. How about uh, the a little bit of the humor side? What about Luke's uh, beverage choice that everybody's talking about? <laughs> Um, that's there. I did have a lot of problem with, the uh, some of the humor, uh, that was not one of the, the moments, um, that I had a problem with. And, and the thing is like most of the scenes with Skywalker on Octu, I didn't really see them as comical. Like when he threw the lightsaber behind his head, I didn't see that. I saw that as him just want, get away from me. I don't want this thing that reminds me of the past i'm here to die get away from me same goes with like the the milk drinking scene like he goes down there ray ray is like this cat this stray cat that will not stop following him just go away and he gives her this ugly look you know with this mouthful of 
boob milk, like from this alien creature boob milk. <laughs> and I didn't see it as comical. I didn't see it as it was more like a like, um, please stop following me. You know, I don't know. Just like a cranky they, old man. Just get yeah, a cranky old man. Yeah. And I'm sure people laughed in the theater. I didn't hear anybody laugh. Um, but yeah, for whatever reason, I didn't see those scenes as comical. Yeah. Okay. What about Kylo Ren with no shirt? Uh, I don't understand it. <laughs> like, like it's a, it was a, if he had a shirt on, I don't know. Like Ray, Ray sees him. He doesn't have a shirt on. And then she says something like, can you put a towel on or, or so I can't remember the exact line. And it was like this comical line, but then in the next shot of her, she's weeping and pouring her heart out. That's one of those moments I felt the tone was just like, you yeah. didn't need that joke. You didn't need Kylo Ren shirtless. It was an awesome scene in itself. You didn't need that. It kind of made it really goofy. I don't know. What do you think the purpose of that was? Just to, I don't know. Is that to capture the female audience maybe a bit? I, I don't... I, it's, I mean, you see movies where there's like a shirtless Matthew McConaughey. And yeah, obviously that's, you know, it's the same thing with like, uh, like if uh, a movie had Kate Upton in a, in a bikini, obvious, it, obviously it's there for the guy audience, you know? But I don't know. I Maybe. I Maybe it was just there for the humor. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it was, it's definitely made, uh, it's, it's definitely become one of the biggest memes from that movie. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, I've, seen, I've seen some pretty funny ones too. All right, just two more left here. What about uh, the Porgs? Did oh, they you fit? Bro- I, I, I didn't hear the, the question you broke out. Oh, the, the Porgs. Oh, the Porgs. Um, yeah, I, I like them. Um, before the movie came out, a lot of people were worried about Porgs. And I, I think they thought they were going to play some huge, significant role in the story for whatever reason. But no, they were just like, um, they were just like, if you were go to, to go to New York City and there's pigeons all around, they were like the pigeons of the Star Wars universe. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I liked them. They were just kind of uh, a native species on this island. And you would expect some native species to, or especially birds, to be on an island. And no, I thought they were nicely, um, they were well done. And I thought they were subtle enough. And they added a little bit of humor uh, that wasn't overblown, in my opinion. I, no, I liked them. So what about the, um, we were talking about humor earlier, what about the scene with Chewie when he's about to bite into a pork and can't do it? Did you find that to be funny? <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I thought it was, I thought it was cute. I, I didn't, I don't know if it was funny, but I thought it was a cute little scene. You know, there's a lot of like, um, I don't know. I, I think people, people have problems with these scenes, but they, they don't think about kind of the goofy scenes in the originals or the prequels. Like they complain about the new movies having these goofy scenes, but then the humor and the goofiness that were in the previous uh, trilogies, they kind of brush over and they ignore that goofiness. You know, it's, I don't know. It's very strange. No, but over, overall, I did not mind that scene at all. I thought it was, I thought, I thought it was cute. And you need, sometimes you, cuteness is okay in star Wars guys, you know, cuteness (laughs) is okay. (laughs) Uh, what about the Force Ghost Yoda? Um, I that I that was one of my favorite moments in the movie. Oh, good. Um, if you would have told me that Yoda was in the movie before I saw the movie, I would have been so apprehensive, so hesitant. I would have went in with just a preconceived notion of me hating it. But um, no, it was really well done. An unexpected moment. Um, puppet Yoda looked great. Uh, and no, it was just subtle enough. Just subtle enough. He went back to his like, you know, he was giggly at first, but if after a second viewing, um, he only laughs once. He's only like trolling Luke for a split second, and then he goes back to being stoic Jedi Master Yoda. You know, uh, no, I, I really liked Yoda in the movie. I did. Do you have any um, bold predictions for Episode Nine? Oh man, um, man, not not really any predictions. I'd have to think about that a little, okay, a little deeper. Um, 
my I just, I hope it's not just the case of like um Empire versus Rebels again. I I hope it goes a little I hope it's a little weirder than that, a little more out there than that, a little more risky than that, you know. But I, I'm a little fearful that it's just going to be Empire Rebels fighting. But uh, who knows? Um, so with uh, Disney's talk of a, a Solo and a Kenobi standalone, then we have Episode Nine, and then we have Ryan Johnson's trilogy announced that's outside of the Star Wa- Star uh, Skywalker saga. Do you think that Disney's going to oversaturate the uh, the Star Wars market, I guess we'll call it, and kind of like make us kind of maybe desensitized to the name Star Wars, that it's just another movie? I I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, um, yeah, I had actually made a video a long time ago uh, called Star Wars or Oversaturation or something like that. I can't remember what it was called. But yeah, it's kind of, you know, for, for us big Star Wars fans – maybe maybe it won't lose its um the anticipation we won't lose that magic and that 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 sense of looking forward to it but for the general audience um it could be it could be the way that i view marvel movies and superhero movies now i don't get excited for them anymore because they are a dime a dozen mostly the same um and it's just an oversaturated market so yeah, I, it is a little worrying. Um, my my thought on it is that maybe after episode nine and the solo movie and potentially a Kenobi movie, maybe they'll take a little break at maybe three years. Who knows to to hammer down the new Ryan Johnson trilogy and then you know revitalize the franchise and and, and bring it back in a big uh, big an, an anticipation kind of way. Um, That's actually, that's kind of my hope, you know, that was a big thing with past Star Wars movies. You had to wait a long time for, for movies, three years, and then you had to wait like decades for uh, new trilogies to come out. And the anticipation was almost as fun as going to see the movie, you know, and I do kind of miss that. I think it's kind of evident in the, uh, the sales also at the box office that the last Mm. Jedi is lower than the force awakens. I think that I think we're going to continue to see that trend that each movie is going to kind of taper down in sales. Probably, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the what was it? The the Last Jedi almost had double first week box office numbers as Rogue One, so it's kind of interesting. Like Force Awakens, uh, huge week one numbers, then Rogue One lower re- week one numbers, and then the Last Jedi was somewhere in the middle. But um, yeah, I think that's kind of an o- only a natural thing, you know. This but, huge hype machine gets born for The Force Awakens. It's been so long since a Star Wars movie. Boom. And then, every, you know, it kind of, it's like a, a I don't know, kind of dies down. All right. I'm going to kind of shift the topic a little bit here to kind of talking a little bit about your channel and some, some of the things uh, that you do. Um, I want to talk first about your, um, a little bit about uh, time management and how you kind of, where to sit down and kind of plan out your week, your activities. Like, is there a uh, family time where there's Kate and no YouTube whatsoever? Like, you know what I mean? How do you plan out your day, week, month? Um, yeah, there's definitely family time. I, I restrict myself. Like my wife gets off at six, um, 6 PM. Um, and then I'm off, off the computer. Like I, I, you know, I gotta, I, you have to have some discipline, you know, I can't just be working on videos and streaming all the time. Um, so there's that. Uh, in terms of like planning my week, you know, usually like I have a piece of paper here in front of me with video ideas written down, um, and then it's basically whatever I feel like making that day. Uh, some videos I know will take multiple days to make, so maybe I'll work on those for two or three hours that day, and then uh, make a, a a quicker video that I can get out that day. Um, and truthfully, like the process has become a science and I've gotten it down really quick. In the early days, it used to take me forever to make a video. Now I've, I've got it down. I can do it pretty quick. Um, but I, overall, I'm not a good planner. Like <laughs> I just, I kind of fly by the seat of my pants. If I feel like making a certain video that day, um, I will. But yeah, I just pretty much have this chicken scratch written down on a piece of paper and that's that's pretty much all my planning. Yeah, I, I wish I could be a little more 
dedicated and planning and have like videos uh, like star you know star wars explained yes he uh he he does a really good job of um like scheduling videos to be uploaded he's he told me that he's always like a month or two ahead of the game and he just has videos that are scheduled to upload um and and it's kind of inspiring to me i wish i could do that um but the biggest kind of thing that holds me back is the the stormtrooper helmet like i have to green screen myself i have to do all this stuff sometimes rotoscope if it doesn't look good there's just a lot more nonsense in the production that i i i've kind of hamstrung myself into have to doing <laughs> but, but yeah but how, how do you uh, how do you motivate yourself when the idea well is dry or you're just kind of um, those those days where you're just not feeling it yeah there's a lot of those days man um i don't know um usually i'll go like maybe go for a jog <laughs> and i'll get an idea or something or just you know you got to have you kind of you have to take a break occasionally and if i'm not feeling it i don't force it I think that's the biggest thing. I do not force myself to make a video if just for the sake of making a video. And that's very detrimental for the YouTube game because YouTube is all about making a video this day. You got to get this many views. You know, you got to make this amount of money. You got to blah, blah, blah. It's, it's constantly putting out content over and over and over again. Um, and in a, in a way, I hate that. I, I hate that the, the system is kind of set up that way. But um, I don't know how else it would be, be set up. But no, I don't force anything. If, if, as you said, the inspiration well is dry, I'll like just do some yard work or, or <laughs> uh, pick up the house or maybe just, I, I don't know, go for a jog or, or work on something else, non-Hello Greedo related. And um, usually kind of resting your brain um, is the best medicine for writer's block, I guess. Yeah. I think doing... Uh... Doing some housework would be a good uh, good way to motivate yourself because nobody really yeah. wants to do housework. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, yeah. I usually have a podcast on, and, and as goofy as it sounds, sometimes like uh, somebody on a podcast will like say a word, and then boom, I'll have an idea, and just from like listening to like Joe Rogan or Nerdist, just one little sentence or something, I'm like, oh, I just got you know, it's weird where inspiration <laughs> comes from. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Did you ever watch the, uh, this is kind of an old film, so you were really young when this came out. Did you ever watch the movie uh, Mr. Destiny? Mr. Destiny. I don't so, think I've ever heard of it. All right, so basically it's a, it's a film where a, uh, a guy kind of looks back in his life and he feels that uh, his whole life path changed because he struck out the championship game in high school. And hmm. uh, he kind of, anyways, the what he ends up doing is... Uh, he gets to replay his life as if he hit the home run at that point in time, and it completely changed. And uh, I'm just wondering if there's any moment in your life where something you could look back to and say, if this happened slightly differently, that Hello Greedo wouldn't exist. Interesting. Um, yeah, I guess it is kind of it's kind of interesting to to look at the path. Um. Hmm. So I, I, I graduated, I guess you graduated from high school probably the same year, 2004? Yeah, that- 2003. Okay. Yeah, 2004. Okay. Yeah, 0304. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Long time so, ago. So, yeah. <laughs> so after that, I, you know, I went to college and, you know, because that's just what you do. Exactly. Uh, I ended up, yeah, I ended up dropping out, just working at a grocery store and then going into the military and if, and then... Uh, basically, pretty much if I would have stayed in the military, if I would have not met my wife or started dating my wife while I was in the military and wanting to get out of the military, Hello Greedo never would have been born. Like the only reason the channel exists is because I got out of the military and then had a lot of downtime. I was living off of deployment money, trying to figure out what the hell I wanted to do. And then I was like, oh, I, I can talk about Star Wars because the special editions are coming out. So if I would have stayed in, which was a big possibility, and I kind of wish I would have just for that security. Um, the channel would have never been born. That's pretty much like the big catalyst that that launched the channel. Kind of a mixture of boredom and uh, trying to figure out what the hell I wanted to do with my life. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. 
It's interesting you just touched on security because the next thing I wanted to ask you is about uh, are you kind of do you kind of feel that YouTube's uh, the last year has been really rough uh, with uh, advertising revenue and do you kind of feel that we'll call it job security is kind of a little scary now like moving big forward? time big time it's uh, and it, it's not necessarily a, because of the um, the whole what do they call it ad ad apocalypse something yeah, like that it was something. yeah yeah. Yeah, because I, I didn't really ever, I never got pinged for, or had to fight off that. Uh, for whatever reason, that never affected my channel. But, um, yeah, the security in YouTube, um, that I'm sure, much bigger channels, but it's a little, you never feel comfortable, um, especially with a baby on the way. <laughs> but you never feel well, quite comfortable. Thanks, man. Thanks. But yeah, you never feel quite comfortable. And honestly, um, I have a, a patron page and that is, I see that as the future of like content creation is people supporting one another um, or supporting their favorite creators. Not just me, you know, nobody has to support me, whatever, but support your, your favorite creators. I, I, I really believe that is where the future is for um, security in this in this weird ass new field that has been around for not very long, you know. Um, it is a little nerve wracking for sure. It is a little nerve wracking because sometimes I'll upload a video and I'll be like, "Oh, this will get a ton of views." <laughs> Doesn't get any views. <laughs> like, makes no ad revenue. Uh, so it's a it's a weird flip of a coin kind of game that we're playing on this on this uh, YouTube. Um, so yeah. Because as the knowledge of SEO gets out there, a lot of people are, you know, the the ta like it's just so competitive too with mm -hmm. tagging and for sure. Someone that, could have ama amazing. Sorry to cut you off there. Someone could no, have amaz good. amazing content, but it just never gets viewed because there's so many people that are just better at tagging or a hundred percent, man, a hundred percent. And I think uh, that's uh, the clear evidence of that is all the clickbait stuff you were talking about earlier. I mean. That is where the revenue is on these clickbaity nonsense videos that absolutely say nothing about nothing, and they're just there to rack in the the ad revenue. That's it, you know. Um, and I try to. That's like maybe that's maybe I need to do more of that for some security. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, I mean, but, clickbait. Yeah. Like while we're opening that uh, can of worms again, clickbait mm -hmm. can be good. I mean, you have to. Sure. Like, like there is good and bad clickbait, but like saying just the word confirmed on a thumbnail mm -hmm. seems to be worth like 10,000 views, <laughs> like no oh, matter yeah. how many subs you have, like that word yeah. is just dude. being thrown around. Yeah. I made some like, I made some tongue in cheek clickbait, like I don't even know, satire. It was clickbait in itself. And I named the titles like Snoke identities confirmed. And that got like 150,000 views. It's and and then I, and it got so many dislikes because people came there expecting something and I just did the sh switcheroo. I, I loved it. I don't know. I love sometimes I love pissing people off. I don't know why. <laughs> but do you think YouTube should maybe step up their game and do something about that, or do you think it's the just the responsibility of? Because I think like a dislike gives someone an engagement. So even if something gets a lot of dislikes, it's pushing it up the search. From what I understand. Oh, absolutely. And even if it's if something gets a dislike, why would YouTube care? Because it's still an eyeball on an ad revenue or an ad advertisement, you know. Um, should, I don't know if they should do anything. I think it's it's really up to the to the the marketplace to to kind of recognize that there's a lot of nonsense that gets spread, a lot of nonsense that gets made for for the sake of eyeballs on ads, uh, for the sake of the ad revenue. And you gotta have, if you're, ch you know, you can't have a channel that's just devoted to pumping out three minute videos on, as you said, like a, a cough from a developer. Like, I mean, that might get you a lot of views, but I, I, in my opinion, it doesn't get you a lot of respect. You yeah, know, and it, there's no longevity there. You're not, exactly. you're not going to yeah. continue to grow. Yeah. And people read into it. People like I play the YouTube game, dummy. I know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. People are goofy. Um, so I was kind of watching some of your Q and A's and one of the big things you talk about is your interest in astronomy. So where did that originate? Um, 
without a doubt from my dad. Uh, he over the years he's given me well, I have all of his Carl Sagan books, all of his astronomy books, stuff like that. But um, yeah, from my dad. My dad's always kind of had a curiosity with that kind of stuff, and for whatever reason, I also just I don't know naturally had a curiosity for it as well. Um, just kind of I don't know. Maybe it runs in the family because my little nephew is plays with bugs and he doesn't care about like uh, I mean he plays video games now but he, he he reads science books and all sorts of stuff and he's only 10 years old he's really deep into it it's kind of interesting but yeah it definitely comes from my dad 100 percent. yeah so do you um does it feel strange when someone tells you that there's eight planets in the solar system after growing up in the 80s and 90s with nine uh no not at all um you know, as we accumulate more evidence about what's around us, definitions of things change, you know. Um, Pluto uh, is a dwarf planet. Um, there's a lot of objects out there uh, in that same belt that are the same size as Pluto. So if you're going to categorize Pluto as a planet, then you have to categorize all these equally sized bodies as planets as well. So it's easier just to kind of make a subcategory for smaller bodies like that, you know. So no, maybe that's a little too, um, I don't know, analytical with this stuff. No, I, I have no, uh, I have no emotional connection to nine planets. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you, uh, did you think that the, the planet was named after the dog, in Mickey Mouse? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I probably did at one point. I probably did. Maybe. I, de- I definitely did. I got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I, yeah. th- I definitely thought they named the planet after the dog. For sure. <laughs> nice. Probably uh, this one around the same year that the character got invented too. I don't I don't know when they. Yeah, I think it was first... ten, like ten years before. I think. It okay. Was, it was okay. really close because that's kind of where the inspiration, like the the new planet, kind of was just being, you know, discovered, and then mm-hmm. the you know they named the dog after it. Um, what was the first car that you ever owned? Uh, Ford Explorer. 1995 Ford Explorer, I think it was. Yeah. 1995. What color was it? White. White? Yep. We're gonna I love bring, that car. We're going to have to bring up a picture of that just to see what <laughs> what one okay. of those looks like today. <laughs> yeah. I um, loved it, man. That was, yeah. That was a road trip car with my buddies for sure. Oh, yeah. That would have had lots of, you could probably fill it up pretty cheap back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is the main reason for keeping your face a mystery? Is it just something that kind of started and is just kind of, it's you're just keeping it, or is it? Yeah, it's it. It was never really a conscious decision to do that. Um, early on in the channel, I actually thought about like doing a face reveal or whatever, um, but. After like wearing the the Greedo mask, people got so intrigued. Like it, it became like became like a game that I played too, and um, just it. I don't know. It's like a sense of fun and mystery. It's not like I, I really wouldn't. I don't know how to put it. It's it's more fun for me to do it this way as like a symbol of Star Wars fandom rather than having my face out there like. I have I don't have much of a desire to promote myself. It's about promoting the channel and our love for Star Wars, if that makes sense. Um, so having Hello Greedo be like a symbol rather than me uh, is just a little more fun um, to me, at least. I don't know. Okay. But uh, has there ever no, been it's a... not like it's oh, it's sorry. not like I'm scared of the public or anything like that. <laughs> it's not like I'm scared to 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 do it. It's just I don't know. It's a little fun thing that that kind of started. Has there ever been a moment that it was almost revealed by mistake? Was there almost like a any any uh, scares? Um, hmm. Le- uh, well, there have been people that found out who I was, and luckily those people have been so cool and helped me close those loopholes. And um, I, I definitely have to give them uh, a big thumbs up for being cool about it um no I'm, I'm pretty pretty cautious about it i i kind of like look for reflections and pictures that i take and stuff as dumb as that sounds i know that sounds <laughs> stupid as hell but uh you know i like keeping the mystery alive it's it's fun yeah do you think at like one million you'll you'll finally say all right let's 
<laughs> Let's just do it. <laughs> Maybe. That's probably 20 years from now, 1 million. But um, no, if, if I'm ever at a convention and I say, hey, I'm at this convention, uh, let's meet next to the Pizza Hut. Um, uh, you know, I would take some pictures for sure. I would, I would take some pictures with people. I don't know if I would ever do it on the channel because the channel's kind of, you know, it's a, it's a thing that, I don't know, I kind of like that mystery. But, you know, if I'm ever at a convention, I would take pictures with people. I think that would be kind of interesting, you know? Yeah, that's, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure that's the bit, like, it almost like, keeps people, like, on your channel. It's just that, like, like, the anticipation that you might someday reveal. <laughs> And they're just Maybe. dying to know what you look like. Because, I mean, I had, like, 30 subs, and then people are like, you know, face reveal, question mark? Right. <laughs> Streams, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. What? <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird thing. It's a, it's a weird thing. Like, I don't know. I don't have, like, some YouTubers that I watch that don't, have, don't show their face. I don't, I don't have a personal desire to see what they look like. I just like their content that they want to make. I, I don't really understand the, the huge desire to... Um, I guess I understand it. We, we want to learn more about the people that we, we watch and listen to and read about, you know, um, I, I get, I get it in that sense, but I don't know. Some people are a little, little too pushy with it, a little too weird about it for sure. I'm kind of moving on here to, um, what was your first video game system that you ever owned? Uh, the original Nintendo. Oh, yep. Nice. We used yep. to blow in the cartridges and oh, yeah. hit the uh, side yeah. of it to get it to work. <laughs> yep. I used to play Mario, and whenever I jumped um, on screen, I would kick, do like a karate kick. <laughs> I don't know, some like weird twitch that I had. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my dad actually plays uh, NHL for uh, PS4, and that's kind of when he gets in really close to the goal, his, his feet are kicking. And he's, <laughs> it's pretty, it's nice. pretty funny. <laughs> nice. What was your first system? Uh, my first system, I did own an Atari 2600. Oh, nice. That I played. Um, so I actually did play the original Empire Strikes Back, which is just wow. a, like shooting AT-ATs. Like you just kind of you blow one up and then you move to the next screen. It's a different color. and Right. It's, uh, games have come a long way since then, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, back then it was just all about score, getting a, racking mm. up a higher score, but... I uh, I got an NES probably when I was four or five years old, and that's kind of that was my system for quite a while. Super Nintendo. Yeah. I kind of moved up the Nintendo. Uh, I never had a Sega Genesis or me either. Uh, yeah, I didn't yeah, have a either. PlayStation One. I had uh, I think my first PlayStation was a PlayStation Two, and then I tried a 360, and then ultimately okay. I didn't enjoy it as much, so I got a PS4 when the next generation came out, but. Yeah, I only so, had Nintendo stuff too. I I had a the only non Nintendo thing I had uh, was when the Dreamcast came out. I got the Sega Dreamcast. Oh, you must have been disappointed that. with. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a, definitely ahead of its time. It connected to the internet. I mean, you could surf the web. You could play online. Uh, there was a little Tamagotchi screen in your controller. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, that. I yeah. remember my friend got one of those, and I was so excited to go play it. Play it. We played the mm. Sonic Adventure, and then mm. it, I just... That was it. There was nothing really... Yeah, Crazy like, Taxi. That was I played that a lot. Oh, that was yeah, about it. But, that was good. I like yeah. That game. yeah. Um, where did you get the original Greedo mask? Um, from eBay, uh, back in 2005, maybe 2000, yeah, 2005, um, for, uh, the midnight premiere of Revenge of the Sith, I dressed up as Greedo, and my buddy dressed up as Han, and we went to the theater, um, and yeah, that, that thing sat in the, the Florida attic for, uh, I mean, from 2005 to 2000. I don't even know, 2011 maybe. And it okay. just got so deteriorated and melted and cracked and everything. So, Is there ever a plan to uh, to get a new mint condition Hello Greedo mask? I actually have one. Yeah, I actually have one. Um, my buddy who lives in England, uh, I, I went over there. Me and my wife took a trip to London and we met up with him and his wife. And... Um, and then two years later, they, they came to the States and they stayed with us for a few days. 
and as a as a thank you, he bought me a new like it's not brand new. It's it's just as old, but it's mint condition, man. I, I'm holding it right now. <laughs> I don't use it. I don't use it enough. I need to use it. But out of all the helmets and masks and nonsense that I own, this is by far the most uncomfortable thing I've ever put on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I remember those all. Is it kind of like a rubbery kind of material? Like yeah, it's it, it's rubber with like. I don't even know what you would consider the eyes. Like, you know those old plastic balls that you would separate when you got out of a toy thing when you put a quarter in? I don't know what you would call oh, those. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Like, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, those Yeah, you'd open pods, it up, I guess. Get, it's... Yeah, yeah. Open it up and get like a fake tattoo or something. That's it, It's almost what these eyes are made out of. <laughs> nice. You better, you should break that one out for a, yeah, I need for a to. stream I need sometime. To. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, just a general opinion question here. Do you think the world's getting more offensive or do you think people are becoming more easily offended? Is it getting more, of, of, I, I didn't hear you. Is it getting more offensive or are people oh. getting more easily offended? Oh, um, <clears throat> I wouldn't say it's getting more offensive. I think we're living in a time, a, a, a far more empathetic, um, time than we've ever lived before by far. I mean, we're, we're so connected with people around the world. I wouldn't say that it's getting more offensive. I, I would argue against that. Um, <clears throat> but I would say there is definitely without a doubt an outrage machine. You know, the slightest little thing that somebody says gets misinterpreted or taken out of context. Um, and then the bandwagon just piles on there. There's definitely an outrage machine that, that is out there. Uh, for the most minor things, sometimes it's like it's like two percent of people care about the issue, and the other ninety eight percent just take a pick a side, just to just right. like you said, a bandwagon effect. Absolutely, they don't. They probably don't even know the issue itself. They're just outraged to be outraged. It's there's definitely a lot of that stuff, and for the most part, you know, it's a vocal, a super va loud vocal minority. Not everybody is scrolling through their Twitter, getting pissed off at everything, and if you are. Yeah, you need to go outside. You need to put the phone down. You need to do something <laughs> else. Like, I, I've all, often, yeah, I've often thought about people that, like, I mean, you know, I pay attention to the news and stuff like that. But for the most part, the issues that people are so worried about have zero effect on their day to day life. They have zero effect on even their future. The only reason they know about these issues is because they are their their eyes are always glued to a screen uh, where somebody is telling them that they need to watch out for this thing. And if they didn't pay attention to the screen, they wouldn't even know. They would go. They would live a much happier life. They wouldn't be so scared. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, it's 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 just it seems like the world's just getting more and more delicate. That's kind of it just yeah. And it, it just takes it takes nothing for someone to someone to get offended yeah i think I, I think i've kind of I, I think it's e people are getting more easily offended as time goes on i don't think i mean if you look at like the shows that we watched when we were younger like the simpsons and then you look at something like family guy then like there is more more is being shown on tv that that mm -hmm. was back then like jokes are getting more and more uh crude but i guess right i, I think as time like people should just if they find that offensive they should just not watch the the program Oh, absolutely. That's the thing. You can, yeah, you don't have to watch it. You don't have to listen to it. I, I, I don't understand it. Like other people are going to have opinions that you disagree with. You're not going to like everything. You don't have to like everything. <laughs> like, I don't know. It, it's just, it's, you know, it's a new medium of communication. We've only had it for not, I mean, not long at all. It's, this is not a natural way to communicate with people. Just constantly scrolling through your feed, seeing opinions, getting called an asshole, it's it, calling people assholes. It's not a natural way to talk to people. And I think that with the human race, there's a big learning curve that we have uh, have to go through now that we, we have this in our in our life, you know? No, I, I get exactly what you're saying. Um, so on the, um, on the topic again of, uh, I'm a little all over the place here, but I could move everything around in the end anyways. No, nah, so you're good. Do, um, do you have an end game plan? Like you, like we talked earlier about how, you know, YouTube kind of the security kind of worries you more and more. Mm -hmm. Do you have like an end game kind of plan? Like if this, if let's say YouTube tomorrow just was gone, what, what kind of plan do you have? 
Ooh. Oh, uh, man, that makes me nervous. <laughs> um, no, I'm not saying it's going to happen. It's not confirmed. No, no, no. I'm not gonna, don't go no. make a video on that. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube ending tomorrow. Um, no, my plan right now is uh, I'm using the GI Bill to go back to school, and I, I have like maybe a year and a half left. I've, I've been taking it kind of slow. Okay. Um, and my ultimate plan is actually to, I mean, even with the success of Greedo, this is still going to happen. I'm still going to. Uh, I, I want to be a high school computer art teacher. That's okay. kind of, that's that's kind of where my my goals are set. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, I I would rather do that and have Greedo um, have a little more freedom than work like a, a normal nine to five like graphic design job. I've done that before and it was fun, but uh, I, I I don't know. I I would rather make a little less money and have a little more freedom. You know. I feel like, and this would maybe make you feel a little better, since I just confirmed that YouTube is going under. Um, <laughs> if uh, I think, in my opinion, if uh, YouTube were to end, that there'd be a lot of uh, a lot of companies reaching out to the big YouTubers and kind of recruiting them for mm. for positions. Like I, I feel like you'd be getting calls within hours of YouTube disappearing. I feel like they're gonna take the the talent off YouTube and they're gonna. They're going to apply it elsewhere. I, I feel like you're yeah. getting tens of maybe even a hundred up to a hundred calls. Like it'd be pretty. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. I mean, I, I already, I'm sure a lot of YouTube get this too. I already get um, emails from um, like video uh, si websites that are similar to YouTube. I already get emails from them reaching out and wanting me to check out their platform that I've never heard of. So I'm sure that would be the case. Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, I'm sure a lot of those are just like, they're casting. They're casting a huge wide net. They're just emailing thousands of YouTubers just to see who bites, you know. Yep. But um, it's kind of interesting. Um. So in Canada, uh, recently, recently the uh, prime minister has announced the um, and is actually going through with the legalization of uh, marijuana. So hmm. how would you? What would your response be to a parent in Canada that's upset with the uh, these upcoming regulations? Because that's kind of the uproar right now is that a lot of parents are feel like it's going to e be more easily accessible and readily available. I would um, see. I'm I'm against the drug war altogether, but um, you know. If, it, if it's a regulated thing, if it's sold in shops, then your kid, it, then it won't be, then you won't, your kid won't have to deal with a drug dealer, potentially something like that. If it's a regulated um, commodity that's sold in gas stations or whatever. Overall, I just believe in personal freedom. Let adults do what adults want to do, right? If I had a choice for my kid to smoke marijuana or drink a shitload of beer, I would go with the marijuana. 100% like anybody that's ever done the two, uh, you know, one is way less, um, less worrisome and, and long-term effects than the other. Um, I don't know. You can't legislate morality. Uh, obviously you can't, I mean, if somebody kills somebody, obviously, but we're talking about, you know, personal freedom, I'm all about personal freedom. <laughs> and if somebody wants to do something, put something into their own body that has zero effect on anyone else, uh, I do not understand the outrage machine um, that wants to legislate morality, especially with something so docile as marijuana. Like I, I, I do not get it. I do I not think, get it. I think you made a good point with the uh, just with the the drug dealer to kind of expand on that is that kids aren't going to go to the gas station and buy marijuana, and then the next week they're going to upgrade to say something a little more potent and a little more harmful. Right. So well, and and it's not like your kids don't already have access to it. it it's it, it, you could argue that they would have less access to it. I mean, look at alcohol and the States is 21 to drink alcohol. It, it's regulated. And I mean, kids still get their hands on it. it I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, it's uh, prohibition has never worked in the history of history. <laughs> um, it creates criminals for no reason whatsoever. It feeds this this prison industrial complex for private prisons. It's a it's just a huge. I don't know. I, I see the reason I'm so um, against the war on drugs is because was when I was in the navy that was basically what I did. I went down to South America 
and we were combating the cartels. And it was just such a huge waste of money to be floating out in the ocean for six months, picking on fishermen, going through their caught fish, looking for cocaine, seeing nothing. It was just such a huge waste of time. And uh, yeah, I could go on for days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's move on. I only got a couple left here. So um, okay. what's been your biggest inspiration as a YouTuber? Um, probably, man, well, in the early, early, early days of the channel, I used to watch a lot of, um, like angry video game nerd. Oh, wow. you know, that's, that's, yeah. that's, um, it's actually one of my, one of my goals with the podcast series is to eventually work up to, to him, but he is, he is, nice. I, I still watch his, his, his weekly content. Nice. I haven't watched a video of his in a long time, but I got to say his stuff made me realize that anyone could do this. You know, it's not like it, it I was watching his videos and I was like, I could do something like this. You know, anybody could do something like this. You just you just have to go for it. That's so him and probably seeing the early phases of Red Letter Media were the two biggest kind of aha moments for me actually pursuing something as YouTube uh, on YouTube. I never thought it would turn into this. I, you know, I just wanted to make a couple videos and just test the waters. But yeah, other YouTubers like that in the early days were definitely the biggest inspirations by far. And, um, and nowadays the biggest inspiration just comes from um, other people's inspiration. Like I feel like sometimes I am in angry video game nerds shoes and I'm telling people to, to just go for it, man. You have nothing to lose, you know, just do it. So I, I don't know that that's what inspires me nowadays. Other people's inspiration and other people's kind words. It, it's a really big motivating factor for sure. Do you ever have anyone in your, uh, your personal life who may be a little critical of your, of your, we'll call it occupation, I guess. Um, no, no, but some people don't, I mean, like the older folks in my life don't get it, <laughs> which I mean, I, I understand that, you know, it's a completely new world. Um, but no, I, I w unless, you know, um, no, I, w I wouldn't say so. Every, mo most people think it's pretty damn cool. Um, they always want to talk about it and see what's new. Uh, and the thing is like, it's kind of funny. I really do enjoy doing these podcasts, but in real life, I like outside of talking on a microphone, I don't really like talking about myself, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's no, everybody's really cool about it. Um, my wife's like grandparents don't get it, but, uh, whatever. I mean, it's a, it's a whole new world. Every. Uh oh, I think you just cut out. Where'd you go? You hear me? Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> you just you just completely cut out. Oh no, that was Oops. strange. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was kind of <laughs> I don't know how much of that I just heard, but okay, because um, it, it just all of a sudden I was like, oh, am I supposed to talk now? This is that awkward silence where you you were all done talking and I didn't realize it. <laughs> Damn you, internet. <laughs> um, if you were to uh, attribute all your success to one thing or one group of things, what would that be? Um, I mean, Star Wars, George Lucas, it's kind of funny that a lot of people make a living off of somebody else's thing that they made a living off of. It's kind of interesting, you know, like without that, I don't know, maybe if Star Wars didn't exist, I would have a Harry Potter. Hello, Harry <laughs> channel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that it, sounds maybe, really funny. hello, Harry. Yeah, maybe somebody, <laughs> somebody should do it. But yeah, I don't know. I would say... Without George Lucas and, and Star Wars as a whole, I know that sounds like a very cheesy and dumb answer, but I, I have to the, – the whole reason this channel exists is because of that. The whole reason I'm so into sci-fi films is because of that. You know, The whole reason that I'm into um, a lot of astronomy is because you know, seeing the twins – I was like, is that real? Could that really happen? Oh, it could happen? Holy shit. You know, it's kind of interesting. Nice. And the last thing I wanted to ask you today is how does um, being a YouTuber full time, how does that affect you when income tax time comes around? 
Is there any it's strange weird. questions you have to answer? Any like they probably are really like skeptical about it. Yeah, well, Google actually sends you a, a, a tax. Um, um, I can't even remember what the form is, but T four. They actually, um, ten ninety nine. Okay. I'm not too sure. Exa- I can't remember. It's coming up, so I'll let you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, no, it's weird because in the beginning of the channel, I didn't, I didn't know anything about that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't know how to claim stuff, file stuff. Because, you know, I got the, the – Google's easy. Google's easy because they actually send you something and it, you just plug it in, works out. That, you don't have to do anything. Other stuff like T-shirts, uh, even patrons, um, I, I, ha- I had to figure that out, you know. It, it's, it's strange because it's, it's, it's more work than I want to do. <laughs> it's, it's not the fun size of, side of uh, YouTube for sure. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, but that's all I have for you today. Um, thanks for stopping in. Really appreciate it. And it's, uh, it's really good of you to take some time out of your day to stop in and have a nice little chat with us here at Bick Mitchum. Yeah, man. I appreciate you having me on. I, um, I really enjoyed it. Honestly, keep it up. And, uh, if you ever want me to be on again for any, whatever reason, chit chat about the war on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we could have did a two hour podcast on that. Probably, probably. (laughs) All right, man. Thanks for stopping in. We'll see you again. Yeah, take it easy, man. Thank you so much. Later.